Hey all, your OS reviews. In this video, we're taking a quick look at the All Powers R600 Portable Power Station. And as winter approaches, it might be an interesting option, particularly if you're living in regions that get a lot of snowfall, possibly resulting in power outages. This will give you some backup power when you need it. This can subsequently power your phones, laptops, as well as smaller appliances, TVs, routers for a little bit longer, thanks to built-in AC slash DC inputs, in addition to standard USB Type A and Type C charging ports as well. There's even a LED flashlight or torch that can illuminate objects in the dark. And this one again is a smart model because it technically can connect to a optional companion app, allowing you to monitor the battery status from afar and control it. And it can also be an interesting option if you are going camping out in the wilderness away from the grid for a little longer. It is also compatible with optional solar panels and the again AC input there can supply up to 400 watts of power maximum. So it should be functional for many fridges, other outdoor kitchen appliances will work as well. Includes enough I.O. to actually charge up to eight devices simultaneously, drawing up to 600 watts total. The power station also claims to fully recharge from zero to 100 in just around one hour, which is extremely quick for such a large power bank. And the battery cells here are rated to last for thousands of cycles, hopefully keeping it functional for years and years down the road. And they claim there's a five-year warranty on those battery cells, which are also going to work with some slightly more rugged terrains as far as weather conditions are concerned, and it is a smart charger in the sense that when battery reaches 100%, it will stop charging your device to prevent any overcharging. Here's also a quick snapshot of the rated duration that it can power various appliances, so small car fridges should operate for up to 6.5 hours. A flat screen TV can be operated for around 2.5 hours or so using the 300 watt hour capacity inside. And by the way, it even has Qi wireless charging support at the very top. So you're able to charge an iPhone with MagSafe, for instance, even without plugging in cables, if you prefer. It comes in two colors, black and also a beige, a more grayish white color. So it's a bit more customizable than many other power stations. And also it weighs in here at around 12 pounds, but includes a handle, making it a little easier to carry in a car for for instance, if you are traveling. Inside the packaging, aside from the R600 power station, you'll find a quick user guide, also providing some instructions of how you can download the optional mobile app for Android and iOS, pairing using Bluetooth. You'll also find just a quick AC adapter here for charging the power station itself. And the R600 is crafted out of polycarbonate plastic. We have the black version with some additional ventilation and also fans on the inside that will kick on to prevent it from overheating when it is charging at higher loads. We have rubber covers on the front to prevent any water from leaking in when you're using it outdoors. We've got a 12 volt car cigarette adapter port in addition to the two full size AC ports. Plus located on the side here are going to be the two type C which can get upwards of 100 watt power output and also two USB type A ports which provide up to 18 watts output. We can also tap on the power key here to illuminate the display which will then show you the power percentage remaining including the input as well as the output wattage and estimated duration remaining which is dynamic and will change based on how much power is being drawn and you can press on these individual keys to turn on and off the different sections otherwise it'll be turned off for safety as well as to consume less power. You can also tap on the light button here to turn on again the LED flashlight or torch which is honestly not bad in terms of illumination for something that is pretty energy efficient. In fact we can tap on the key once more to go into a slightly higher brightness mode as well as once more into an SOS blinking mode if you're in an emergency and then once again to turn it completely off. And otherwise we can fold down the handle on the top if we wanted to use the Qi wireless charging pad, which again provides up to 15 watts. Maybe the only slight con though is the top surface is just a matte plastic. I would have preferred maybe a slight soft touch rubber accent to prevent anything from sliding around quite as easily, but overall it's still functional. Back of the power station is completely bare, aside from a couple of soft touch bumpers, adding a bit of durability. And located on the right hand side is going to be a flap that you can pop open to access the input for charging up the power station itself, as well as a brake switch. So if you're operating an appliance that is drawing too much power and it turns off to protect itself, you can then click on the breaker switch again for it to reset. And also there is a solar AC input. So not bad. And overall, as far as power stations are concerned, it has a pretty clean overall design. The display brightness level will also slightly decrease to consume a bit less power. The very bottom here just features again some soft touch rubber to prevent it from sliding around onto a surface or a desk. Some of the rated kind of specs as far as the ports are also labeled. Each of the Type-C ports, again, getting upwards of 100 watts, it's more than sufficient for charging phones 
phones and laptops, including MacBooks or Ready, in addition to the regular Type A and even the wireless charging can all be operating at once. All right, so now with all the ports turned on, including Bluetooth, let's try the charging now as a demonstration. Beginning with USB Type-C first, let's also try charging up a laptop here. And after a couple of seconds, you can tell that the charging has started. And from the display, we can verify that it's currently drawing around 42 watts of juice. At this current speed, it's estimated that the power station can last for three more hours. Right now, again, we're 64% full. And speeding things up a little bit, let's try juicing back up a smaller power bank using this power station. This is a GAN gallium nitride-based power bank, and you can tell that now it's drawing nearly 100 watts. Although in my testing earlier, it was actually able to surpass that, getting closer to around 150 watts watts give and take uh, just because the power bank itself is now almost 80% full so the charging has slowed down to prolong the battery health but when it was nearly empty it drew even more power. Let's also try using the Qi charger next and we can verify that indeed the charging will pretty much start instantly. 15 watts is not bad for a wireless inductive charger. Working without too many problems even if you have a case on your phone it's not too picky in terms of position either. It's still a bit slower compared to the AC or the Type C ports, but you get that added convenience. That being said, wireless charging isn't quite as efficient as wire charging because some of the energy gets lost when passing through the inductive coils. So if you were really in an emergency and you wanted to conserve as much juice as possible in the power station, it probably is best to just use a cable. Using the same amount of juice from the R600, you're probably able to charge the phone's battery up a little higher and also faster via the wired method. During the charging though, all devices seem to remain quite cool in terms of temperature, nothing is really overheating which is certainly good including the actual power station itself and the ports here are also spaced apart enough they don't really interfere with one another even if you're plugging in four cables at the same time so in this demonstration i'm now going to be using the regular type a ports to instead charge some other devices including powering a lamp and as you can tell it is still functional now drawing a perfect 100 watts it's really only when you're using the AC ports drawing more juice up to 400 watts does the fan start to kick in as a safety measure. And so speaking of, let's try using the AC ports next. And in this demonstration, this is connected to a large lamp from Govi, aka their corner lamp. And as you can tell, it is more than sufficient for turning it on completely. Really the same goes with other standard appliances. Again, whether it's a monitor, TV, mini fridge can all be operated using the standard AC port. Or if you have a laptop that isn't using type C, it's a proprietary, maybe older style charger, you can of course plug it in here instead to still charge it back up. A pretty good backup power source if you are in a pinch or again off the grid in an RV. And in this current state, the R600 can last roughly one hour because we are powering so many devices at once. Plus now we can hear the fans kick onto life providing some airflow to keep the power station cool. Overall though, it's not too loud, nor is it gonna be that distracting even if you're using it indoors. There's a gentle white noise, even more quiet than a refrigerator compressor, I would say. And I do kind of like some of the green accents here as well. And if we had to be nitpicky, maybe one slight con in the AC charger parts design is the ports could possibly be moved up by maybe half an inch. I just point this out because certain adapters, which might be a little bit longer, like this one from Govi, as you can tell, almost hit the very bottom of the table as it's resting in this position. It certainly still works, but I guess it's a compromise of having a more compact design overall for a power station, that is. It's not going to be an issue, though, if you are using smaller AC plugs. And on that subject, longer kind of L-shaped plugs that are horizontal will work as well. You just have to place them sideways away from one another when you're charging and it can be still plugged in without too much interference. We can tap on the top compartment and tap on next step. It will search for nearby devices. It's found the R600. Mirroring the information shown on the display of the power station, we can check out the battery percentage remaining as well as an estimated duration that it can continue to last, total output as well as input. In addition to the individual ports, we can actually turn on and off. So if we wanted to stop using the AC ports, we can control this from further away instead of fiddling around with the controls on the dashboard. And now the Estimated duration has also gone up. Similarly, we can also turn the other ports on and off individually and also turn on and off the LED lights as well. That being said, it seems like you can't really cycle through some of the lighting modes like the brightness as well as the SOS. So for that toggle, you have to still press on the light button. And the R600 can also function as a pass-through charger. So if you plug it into the wall, it'll charge the power station and your devices simultaneously. That being said, it seems like the USB Type-C port cannot be used as a power input. For 
we're juicing back up the R600, you still have to use the regular plug that comes bundled with. So that might have been a little bit more versatile, but it is what it is. You can also navigate between a standard mode as well as a mute mode, which will turn off kind of that beep or chime speaker built into the power station. There's even an eco mode on here that will just slightly decrease the screen brightness, time out after X hours of operation, which you are able to control from here up to six hours. So overall, the app is functional enough, connectivity seems to be pretty reliable, and it's neat to have some of the status at a glance. Overall, I think this is still a pretty solid performing power station. Again, if you want something with a little bit more juice, it has a rather clean appearance and plenty of I.O. here for charging even standard appliances in addition to your phones and computers. And the app component is certainly something we haven't really seen on past power stations, making the R600 just a little bit smarter and providing a little bit more customization as well. You can learn more details if interested in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.